we try to prove a well-known fact regarding n consecutive integers, that is, the product of them is divisible by n factorial. So in this case, a is positive integer, so integer from a plus 1, a plus 2, up to a plus n, the product of this is multiple of n factorial. Now, to prove that, we're going to use the concept of what is called periodic number of a prime number p with respect to an integer n. The notation sometimes is new symbol here. Yeah, so for example, let's say p equal 2 and n equal 120. So what is that? 120, we try to factor that into primes. That's going to be equal to 12, that is 3 times 4, right? 2 to the six. And 10 is 2 times 5. So that is 2 to the third power times 3 to the 5. So new of 2 of 120, in this case, we use a power that is 3. So equal 3. So mathematical definition is that new of p with respect to an integer m is going to equal the maximum number of r such that p to the r divides n. Yeah. So of course, if p is not divisible, in other words, if p is not in the prime number factorization, then this value would be zero. Now, on the other hand, if n is zero, then this r could be arbitrary large. We say that that's going to be infinity. That is some special. Case. Now, since we're dealing with bacteria, so we are interested in what is the new value, the periodic value of the p of n bacteria. In this case, for example, what is the prime number 2 in 120s bacteria? So what is that? Okay. So on the high level, when you think about it, 120 vectors, that is 1 times 2 times 3 times 120. So this number, you're going to have a lot of 2s. So, so you would imagine you have 2 to the r's power. We need to find out what is the maximum r so that this divides 120 vectors. So the intuition is you're going to count how many 2s you have. You have 2, you have 4, all the even numbers. Now, in general, for number p, yeah, if it's not a 2, if it's a p, let's say if this is p, the way you find it is that how many number of p's in this n bacteria? That is, in general, you have n divided by p, and it's going to be floor function, yeah? But then you undercount some values here. Like for example, for the number two, if there's four here, this is actually two square. It contribute two in this exponents here, right? So you have to add all the number of p square in the sequence and take the floor function. And similarly, you if for for the 8, because this is 2 to the 3rd, where you counted once, counted twice for the p square, and you're still missing one value here, you need to count how many copies of p to the 3rd power in this sequence here, right? So on and so forth. So that is, we have what is called Legendre formula here answer exactly that question. That is, for n factoria, the new of p is going to be the summation here from, so if we spend it out, it's going to be equal n over p floor function plus n over p square floor function and so on and so forth, right? The reasoning, on the high level reasoning, we did it earlier, right? But this is not a rig rigorous proof. So we're going to use this fact to argue 
the one we try to prove. Now, notice that the right hand side is a product of n numbers, but the right hand side is actually equal to a plus n vectoria divided by a vectoria. So we need to prove that this is a multiple of n vectoria. Now, as a matter of fact, we're going to consider this number here. We're going to consider what is a plus n vectoria divided by n vectoria and a vectoria. We want to prove that this is an integer. Yeah? This is nothing but binomial numbers, right? So in other words, we try to prove the binomial number a plus n choose n is an integer. So if you prove this is an integer, this is an integer, then that means this part must be multiple of n factorial. Okay, that's a proof. How do we prove that? So we're going to use Nagendra formula here. We're going to consider any prime p is a prime. It's going to be less or equal to n. We're going to consider what is the new value in the numerator here of a plus n vectoria. And by definition, it's going to be the summation of plug in the formula here, it's going to be full function of p to the r in the num uh, denominator, and here it's going to be a plus n. Yeah. Now, in the denominator, the p, what is the power here, right? The, in other words, what is the new value of p in the a vectoria and n vectoria? That's going to be the summation of the two, summation of Yes, erase that. New of a factorial plus new of m vectorial, right? Because it's a product. When you do the um, power, piece power, you're going to add it up, right? So the addition here. So here, notice that this is going to be the floor function here. Sigma here. Yeah, i from 1 to infinity. It's going to be the summation of a over p raised to the i's power plus n p to the i's power's floor function here. Now here we're going to use an important inequality regarding the floor function. So we claim that for a positive number x and y, we have the floor function of x plus y is going to be greater or equal to floor function of x plus floor function of y. Why? Because when the floor function, the fraction part, sometimes you could overflow, right? For example, in the case this is bigger, this is where one example is x is 5.8, y is, let's say, 4.7. Yeah, so individual one is going to be floor of 5.8 is going to be 5, plus 4.7 is going to be 4, but then that's going to be less than this floor function here is equal 10, right? Because it's a 10 something, right? So in other cases, if this is 4.1 plus 5.1, then the, the equation is actually equal, right? 4.1 plus 5.1. Okay, so we need to use this inequality here. So here is x plus y, and this is x is y, right? This is x, y, this is x plus y. So we know that this one is always greater or equal to the second one, right? So which means what? Which means in here, any prime number p the factor in the bottom, the power is always less or equal to the one on the top. So that is, this is an integer. If that is integer, that means this part must be multiple of m vectorial. So we have proven the fact. 
okay, by considering what is called the new function or periodic fu uh, value of a prime with respect to some vectorial number here. Okay, so that's uh, we're going to use this fact a lot in certain number theory proofs. That is, the product of the n consecutive integers is divisible by n factorial. All right. Hope you enjoy the video. Please like and share.